What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of On the Mic with Michael Flicks, right here and only on Dream Radio. Very excited about this uh, this interview, man. This is the first women's basketball player that I have on the show, Miss Lala Ever. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Yeah. I was telling. Uh, I'm pretty sure you saw. I was telling Full Time Hoops. Uh, you made me feel bad when I mic'd up uh, Jurian. He mm-hmm. was like, "What's up? You gonna mic up yeah. the girls?" And I was like, "Man, like." I never like was trying not to. I just didn't, for whatever reason, didn't think to do it. But I'm for sure gonna do it this year. You're gonna be the first girl I mic up this year. I got you. For sure, for sure. How you been doing though? I'm good. I'm coming back, trying to get back to 100%. So I'm doing good. Coming back from an injury? No, uh, being sick. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So trying to get back to full potential so I could get in the gym and work out. But it's been kind of tough. So mm-hmm. I see you've been playing. You've been playing with the boys. Yeah. Have you always done that? Yeah, since I was a freshman. So my brother, like, he was always telling me, like, you want to get better, you got to play with the boys. So Uh I'm like, okay. Like, freshman year, it was kind of, I was nervous. I didn't get to play as much, but now I've, like, earned the more respect. Like, okay, you could play with the boys. You good, you good enough to play with the boys. So it just makes me better, so. How was it that first year playing with the boys? Uh, It was kind of, I was nervous. It was different because I'm always playing with the girls. And then I didn't really play. I started getting back into basketball like eighth grade. Mm-hmm. So ninth grade, it was like, oh shoot, like my brother's trying to make me play with the boys that eighth grade summer. So I was like, okay, like I might as well just play. You know, my dad and all my brothers just telling me to play. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just go. But it was it was kind of nervous. I was nervous. It was different. A lot of phys- they're real physical. So, but going to the girls is different. So. You say getting back into basketball in eighth grade or ninth grade? Mm-hmm. Eighth grade. What were you doing? Eighth grade, like summer. What were you doing when you weren't playing basketball? I wasn't doing nothing, so that's why my nothing brother... Nothing at all? No sports at no, all? No, no sports. So, like, in fifth grade, like, I hurt my knee a little bit. So, I was like, you know, I didn't know what an injury was. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, I'm not playing basketball no more. And I, that's when I was playing for EBO. I went to their I went to their tryouts, and I had got hurt and stuff. So, but, yeah, eighth grade. Yeah. And you, your freshman year, did you, were you straight to varsity as a freshman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Straight to varsity. And that was... Was your freshman year or your sophomore year where you guys won CIF? Sophomore year, that quarantine year. How was that? It was a good feeling. I I talk about that to this day, every day. Like, it was a good feeling. Like, I wish I'd go back because quarantine year is when everything has stopped. Mm-hmm. And I was my So you guys won year. it, and then right after that is when quarantine happened, right? Yeah, we yeah. won it, quarantine happened. Mm-hmm. But it's just the fact, like, being with that 2020 class, I didn't really get to finish. Like, you know, like, I wanted to, like, have the rest of the year with them. But I hear it you. was yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, it was a good feeling. That was pretty good. So what was it like going from, like, a championship team to, like, a team that was kind of not really up to that? Going from a championship team to a team that's not as good as that one is it's different. I mean, it's a good feeling being with a a team that you know you got support, but it comes with a lot of leadership now. So that's what's made me, like, be a leader and be a bigger person. Like, okay, I got you. Like, got to help them. Got to bring them in the gym sometimes. Like, Like, get better, get better. So it's it's different. Was that some that so it was different? Something you had to get used to. Yeah. I gotta What's get used your leadership to it. style like? Mm. Are you a vocal leader? Or are you more like just kind of yeah. do what I'm doing, or like how do you how yeah, do you so, think your leadership so style I was, is like? I'm really quiet. Like I'm not like a person that's like loud or like gotta keep getting your face. Like let's go. Like but I have learned to like speak up more mm-hmm. this year because I gotta speak up in order to get what I want from my team. So mm-hmm. yeah, pretty vocal. Like li- this year I've been more vocal. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, did you ever play any other sports growing up, or was it only basketball? Uh, no, my parents had me in everything. I was in softball, track. I hated track. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Softball, track, uh, tennis. They had me in tennis for a little bit. Got out of it. And then my- I really like to play tennis. Yeah. I wish I played in high school. I play like with my friends every now and again. Like We'll find a park with a tennis court. Mm-hmm. I really like playing. I'm actually pretty good, too. I wish yeah. I played in high school, but, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Sorry to mean to cut you off. No, you good. How come you didn't know you don't want to stick with any of those other sports? Um, okay, so yeah, if okay, this is how I got back. Yeah, so why I didn't want to stick with those sports because I had went to a, um, one of the girls Lincoln High School's basketball team games when I was in in that eighth grade, eighth grade, no, like around seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And my brother's like, let's go out to the game. So I went out to the game, and then I seen little Maria. If you know little Maria. I don't know if you've seen her play. Yeah, you know, because mm-hmm. she went to my game. Mm-hmm. But I've seen her play. I'm like, okay, my brother's hyping her up. Like, why is he hyping her up? You know, as a sister, you're going to get jealous a little bit. Like, who's this, who is he talking about? Yeah, yeah. So I go to the game, and I'm like, okay, she's good. Like, why not? I'm going to just get back into basketball. So that day, that night, I went home, and I'm like, Mom, I want to play basketball. And then, like, I want to play basketball for real. Like, I want to get back into it. 
So then that next day I had went to the Lincoln practice and then I went, I just went to one of their practices and then I, that's when I was playing for the YMCA too. Mm -hmm. So I just, I didn't go back to one of their practices, but I went out, tried it out and I was like, okay, I like this. And then that's how I just ended up at Lincoln. Did you feel any pressure with your brothers being like pretty good basketball players and playing at the same school that you're at, you're at, you're at now? Did you feel any pressure coming behind them or, or, or not mm, so much? Not so much because I don't, I don't, their expectations, expectations for me, like the coaches, because I was coming back. So I, they weren't like, okay, like she's really like, she's like that. But it wasn't too much pressure, not too much pressure, but now all the pressure's on me. So mm -hmm. I got to deal with it, but it's cool. How do you deal with it? um it's kind of like i have my days like it's tough like i be want to go home and just like sometimes i'll be like i'm not playing i don't want to play basketball no more like we all have those thoughts because you know yeah. it comes with a lot mm -hmm. but i do deal with it but, like a lot of a lot of videos i watch just to like keep controlling myself so a lot of people ask me too like in the games like how you control yourself like it's just like mental emo you got to control your emotions like being a good basketball player you got to control your emotions mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot of pressure though. Mm -hmm. Basketball, I'd say to be a good athlete in, in in general, but basketball in particular because it's so up and down. Like football, you drop a pass, the play's over. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You get time to like compose yourself, and it's a play right after. Like basketball, you lose the ball, you got to go chase this dude or chase the player down and get the uh -huh. ball back, or like get back in position. You definitely got to learn to control your emotions. It's a uh, Definitely a roller coaster every game for sure. Yeah. How do you decompress from the game? Like, say you had a tough loss or like maybe like a tough practice where your team just wasn't picking up what the coach needed you guys to do, or you're just really mm -hmm. frustrated. How do you decompress like when you're at home or like when you're away from the game? Yeah. So when I'm at home, like it's really just my mom. Like my mom and well, my dad. He's in Virginia, but he's moving back for my senior year. But my parents, like for sure, like they're always in my head about. Like it's more a lot of personal development they do for mm -hmm. themselves. So you know I'm gonna hear it every day. So just controlling yourself, watching yeah, like watching video. I guess motivational videos, just really controlling, like learning how to control yourself when things get tough. Mm -hmm. So now now after winning a after winning a championship and then probably did you know that your team was gonna be kind of like not so good the next year? Yeah. Did okay. you ever have any thoughts of transferring? Yeah. So I've I've had thoughts of transferring when right when that CIF right like right when I knew okay mm -hmm. I'm gonna have a tough team next year like my brother was like you sure you want to do this like it's gonna be a lot so I actually transferred to like Paloma down there in um Marietta area or no Menifee down in Menifee area and then I was like it's you know you know when it's home it's home so I'm like so I transferred down and they're a pretty good team I think they're D1 they were a D1 and I transferred down there and then I had to come back because I'm like, this family, it's different. Like, you know, when you go to a new environment, it's like, okay. But I knew it was for basketball. But it's other things that I have to work with, too, like mentally for myself. So I'm like, okay, like, I want to go back to Lincoln. Makes me feel like home. And I'm going to just ride it out for the four years. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay. Like, I'm going to work with my team. I could, we probably got potential. Like, that's what I was like. I was telling my brother, like, we probably got potential. I'm going to just go see what's down there and we're going to work with it. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I did have thoughts of, trans like, I did transfer, and then I've had opportunities to go to, like, better schools, but I just want to ride it out with Lincoln. Mm -hmm. It's family. It's the hive. So, nothing, I heard that. <laughs> so, it was never nothing around, uh, nothing in San Diego. If you're going to transfer, it's going to be somewhere, like, way out of town, or? Um, it, wait, you're saying, like. Saying, like, you say you were going to trans, when you did transfer, you transferred all the way up to Marietta. Yeah. Menifee so, you, you uh, Menifee area, mm -hmm. you didn't have any thoughts of transferring to any, like, local schools? Mm, I did have a couple thoughts transferring to a couple schools down here, but. Yeah, I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna transfer. I hear you. I just wanna stick it out with Lincoln. I hear you. Do you watch a lot of basketball? Uh, I try to, but I don't even have time to be on the TV. Mm -hmm. Like, if I watch basketball, it's gonna be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I, like, if I'm in class and there's free time, okay, I'm gonna go check out my highlights, or like, I'll go check out somebody else or other girls, or mm -hmm. you know. But I don't really have time. I never have time to just sit on the TV. Mm -hmm. So. Who are some of your favorite players? When you do watch basketball, who are some of your favorite players to watch? Um, for sure, Skylar Diggins. And then for the boys, Kyrie Irving. Yeah? Yeah. I can like, guess I that about you. Handle, like, I can handle. guess that about you. I, I, yeah. I probably could have guessed that about you for sure. Yeah. If you, um, what's your, what's your, do you have any goals for your senior year? Like, as far as, like, your team, what do you want your team to do? Do you have any personal goals for yourself? Um, team goals, I think, I think we can, we have a really good chance of going CIF this year and personal goals, just working on me and being a better, a better leader because, you know, I always got that somebody in my ear telling me I'm not good enough or, you know, got to step up your game, la la. But 
being a better leader and just doing what I got to do for the next level. You say you always have someone in your ear. Like who? My coach. Okay. Yep. Okay, okay. Is that something that you... That and you... my brothers, too. My okay. brothers a lot. Like, they're always in my ear. One, it was the Helix game, the first playoffs Helix game. Like, they were in my ear because I had made a pass to this girl, and I wasn't supposed to do that. So they got really... But, like, my brothers, for sure. Mm-hmm. They're always in my, my family in general. They're always, like, pushing me to do... Got to get it. Like, like got to go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Do you feel Do you feel like it's ever too much, or, like, are you okay mm-hmm. with it? At times, I do feel like it's too much, but then I look at it, like, at the end of the night, I'll go home and be like, no, like, I needed that. Like, they need to push me, because it's only going to make me better to go do further and go do better. So, mm-hmm. but, yeah. Do you have any uh, college interests right now? Mm-hmm. College interests, honestly, I, I haven't been really marketing myself like that. And throughout my whole high school years, so playing with the boys is good because it goes back, it all falls back like on off season and stuff. Because, you know, girls go, we have our viewing period. And like, when is it? July, I think? Or it's one of those. But I had went down to Texas. So it was my, like, college. Colleges, I've never really got the experience to get looked at by colleges because I've never been exposed like that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so I haven't really been, never really, like, the whole four years, I never really got exposed like I really should have because I always play with the boys during the off season, And, you, you know, I'm not going to get looked by a boy coach. So I never really got looked at. And, I, and then I didn't go to a club team because my sophomore year is when quarantine happened, so I was supposed to play for EBO. And I never got to play with them for the whole quarantine year, so that was, like, a whole off season that I could have got looked at. But just that year in general was kind of tough for everybody. So, but yeah, college college coaches. Um, I got to market myself, and it's been tough. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to, there you, you know, got to make the calls and all that. Maybe my coach. It's a really good. I mean, I was just, I was just, I just had an interview uh, right before you came here. I was just mm-hmm. telling him, man, there's nothing wrong with the JUCO route. Yeah, nothing I told the JUCO route. Yep, I told my coach that too. Like, and my mom, I'm like, mom, I'm fine with going JUCO. A lot of people think you got to go D1, D1. Like, they push it. Like, it's not, yeah, D1 is a different level, but Ju- it's never wrong to go JUCO. Yeah, not at all. And especially uh, Palomar, the, the, girls, mm-hmm. the girls team. They're like always one of the best teams in the state. I think one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. Um, I remember my brother, so my brother used to coach at women's. I, he actually, um, I filmed one of the games when you played against my brother. He, he used to coach at Ramona. Mm-hmm. You guys played against them. I think you're. Yeah, the, the year you guys won the championship, yeah. your sophomore year. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he was telling me that he, he thought that the um, the women's Palomar team could beat the women's Cal State San Marcos team. Mm-hmm. He's like, the Palomar team is really good. Like all yeah. the, But anyway, yeah. Think, There's nothing wrong with going the JUCO yeah. route. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So is that something you're open to? You're going to yeah, continue to play after high school? something I am open to for sure. If nothing happens this year, I don't mind going JUCO. Like, it's got to work. Got to mm-hmm. put in extra hours. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you, like I said, you got you got all your brothers. You continue to play with the boys. I'm sure you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. There's a yeah. lot of people, you know. Uh, you know, Link, Lincoln's got a a deep history of players that can help you out. There's a lot of people in San Diego that you could tap in with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Lots and lots of players. Have you ever worked with uh, any of the trainers here in San Diego? Um, uh, I was gonna work with. Um, okay, I don't know if you know Manny Perez. Yeah, couple, for sure. Yeah, I know. Ma- I worked out with Manny a couple times. Mm-hmm. I usually, honestly, I just stay in Lincoln, though. Like, I, Coach Jeff, you know mm-hmm. Coach Jeff, Coach mm-hmm. Jeff and Coach Lonnie, they're always working me out. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if I want to get in the gym, like, Coach Jeff, I just call him up, mm-hmm. get in the gym. But I don't really go for the trainers like that. I just do it myself, or my dad, too. My dad, like, always trains me. It's just he's in Virginia, so. But I don't really do the trainers like that. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. It's just I always have my dad around, so I always, my dad always works me out, like, every day in my coaches so i never really just pushed it on the trainers i just always i don't know it's just you never felt the need because you had yeah i felt okay. never had the need okay. never at first, i asked because at first when you said it it kind of felt like mm-hmm. it seemed like you maybe felt a way about trainers so no i don't feel a way about trainers okay, no because okay. i i was just telling my mom the other day like mom, i want to get a trainer because you know my dad's not here mm-hmm. or, but i always have my coach that's why it's like i always have somebody willing to work me out right so i never really like oh a trainer a mm-hmm. trainer but yeah what do you think is like? What do you think is the best part of your game? What do you think is something that uh, you got the, like the biggest chance to improve on? Uh, the best part of my game is for sure shooting. I mean, everybody, um, everybody that I play or against, they all know. Oh, you gotta watch Lala for the shooter. You gotta watch shooters. So, what I do need to improve on is my defense, and I want to improve on attacking the basket more. Okay. But the defense for sure. I gotta work on that. What do you, What do you think will help improve your defense? Uh, just. Um, working out a lot, mm-hmm. doing like, what is it? Ladder drills, slides, that's yeah, that ladder stuff. drills. You ever thought about running track? 
Or get I'm him back in the running track? This year, okay, nice. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I was like, I'm gonna run track because I need to just for you know the next season, mm-hmm. basketball season. Mm-hmm. I could just be a little faster. Yeah, my little brother was uh, he played basketball as well, but his main sport was football. And it was it was crazy because like all growing up, like he mm-hmm. was the youngest. Like I have an older brother and a younger brother, so my little brother he had two older brothers that he always kept up with. So he was always like faster or one of the faster kids in his age group. But then he started playing football in high school, and everybody was faster than him. He started running track, and he caught up and passed everybody. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, helped I helped him on the basketball court as well, like mm-hmm. defensive slides and everything. Helped for sure. Yeah. yeah. You ever thought about volleyball? I kind of when I watch you play basketball, I felt, I felt like you'd be a pretty good volleyball player. It's crazy you say that because I went out to practice one day and I was like, "Nope, mom, I don't want to go." Mm-hmm. I was like, "I don't want to go" because me and my other two teammates were supposed to play, but we were like, and the coach really wanted us. He was like, "We could do this. We could see how this year." He was excited, but mm-hmm. I kind of felt bad because I never came back. Mm-hmm. But it's just like I gotta do basketball. Like I mm-hmm. train too. Like I work out too much, and I don't have time to just go to a pra- another practice that when I could be getting better at what I like to do. I hear you. I hear you. So it's it's excuse me. It's interesting to me how like how that changed over time because it used to be like the and I'm not. This is no disrespect. I fully understand why people only stick to one sport now. But it used to be like the the super athletic people like you are. Mm-hmm. Like you're one of the one of the girls that like I feel like could play any sport you wanted to play mm-hmm. and be one of the one of the starters. Um, but it used to be like the people that were really athletic like yourself. They played everything because they knew they could. Yeah. But now like people seem to only like focus more on their sport. On you know what I mean? Sport. Or they might they might step out and try it like every now and again. Like Elijah Black. I just had him in here. He's playing football yeah, this year. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? And it blew my. I was like, oh, that makes sense because you know he's a big strong kid. It makes sense yeah. that he's playing football. Ball, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, anyway, I yeah. think you'd be a pretty good volleyball player. You should try yeah, it out. Yeah, I, I did that. I, I did play that too. I forgot to mention mm-hmm. that. But in high school, you did? No, in okay. like younger years. Okay. I only played it like two years. Mm-hmm. My brothers always tell me though, I'm not too, I'm not tall enough for it, cause you know you gotta have like the wingspan to mm-hmm. get up. And but I just, uh, it's whatever. I hear you. I hear you. I'm glad you came in today. I'm mm-hmm. glad you came in. You're one of the Thank like you. I say, yeah. It made me feel bad when you hit me up, but like I say, I you, uh, it, it, it worked. Though. Up. It worked. <laughs> I got you. I got you. You, you, and a, f- a few other uh, women's players. I'm gonna reach out to and anybody else that you know that reach out. I want to do it. I'm open to it. Like I said, it wasn't like something that I was like, no, I'm not going over there to the girls. It's just yeah. the boys reach out. I don't know if the girls don't know that they can or I know nervous you just gotta too. Reach out or, on, yeah. yeah, like you said, that's it. You reached out and I was like, yeah, let's do it. It was mm-hmm. that easy. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I appreciate you coming in and joining me on the show Thank today. You. I like your I like your tattoo on your hand. Did oh, that yeah, hurt? Tattoo. The tattoo? Yeah. Yeah, the hand did. Yeah. Sure. I always wanted one in my hand, but thank you though. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. It's been another episode of On the Mic with Michael Flicks. I appreciate you joining me. Till next time. <laughs>